In this step, we're going to import some new lights into our level to simulate lights coming from these obvious light sources that we've got in there. So to do that, we need to be over here in our modes panel and we can go straight to the lights section and there are four options and we're going to be using point light and spotlight in this step. So we'll start with the point light, so we'll just drag one out and we're going to try and place it pretty close to the fire. So we won't quite get it spot on but we need to get it close. And when it is close, one of the things that I want to do, I'll just zoom in a little bit, is I don't want these logs to cast any shadow because that's going to look a bit strange but we do want these stones to cast a shadow. So to turn shadow casting off on the logs we're going to click on them and then if we just scroll down a little bit where we're looking into lighting we can turn cast shadow off. So we get rid of that and then that hopefully won't look as odd. So then we'll click on our light and we need to get this in place. So I want to have this sort of inside the fire. Ooh, that looks good. How low can I go? I like that. I think I'm going to go for that. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's the light in place. And really all it's doing is casting, casting a really sexy shadow for me. Okay. So now that this is in place, we're going to make a few changes to it. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll change the attenuation radius, which is basically how far does this light travel? What does it influence? So with it selected, we're going to go into our details panel and here's our attenuation radius. I'm just going to bring it in. I want it to just only just be getting as far as the cabin. And obviously lights are quite GPU intensive. So we don't want lights to go any further than we absolutely have to have them do. So we'll turn that down. As for the color of this light, we're going to want it to be quite orangey as well because it's a fire. So something like that. I think I'm going to give this a little bit more of a red tinge just to distinguish it from the sunlight that's also kind of orange. And I might just bring up the intensity a little bit as well. Just so we can really see that that's having an effect. And I can bring that back down again later if I'm not happy with it. But for now, I want to be able to really see that. Okay, so that's going to do it for the firelight. What we're going to do next is get a light in place for this. So for this one we're going to use a spotlight. So I don't want to use a point light because I don't want the light to go out in every direction. I don't want it to hit the side of the cabin. I still want that to stay quite dark. So we're going to go for a spotlight and we'll bring that in and we can see that by default that just wants to point at the ground. Which is fine. It can do that if it wants. But we are absolutely going to work on that because we don't want it to do that. Okay so we'll bring it up 90 degrees. So that's pointing straight out, as we can see. And then what I want to do is get an idea of what angle it should be coming out of the cabin at. That looks pretty nice. Okay, so that's a good start. And then what I want to do is have this be quite a wide spread. So I'm going to change the outer cone angle and I'm really going to bring that up quite a long way. So that'll go as high as 80 degrees. Let's see what we think of that. 80 degrees is pretty good. Can I go for 85 if I type it in? Oh, I can. So we're going to have 85, which I like. And the attenuation radius is going to come down a bit as well. I don't want that to go too far. And the colour. I want this one to have a bit of a yellow glow to it. And again, I might just up the intensity a little bit so I can see that. And then the final thing really with this is just to get it in place. So I want to just push it back if I can a little bit. But I really don't want it to go inside the house because that could totally break it. And I do want it to be pretty central in the window if I can get it there. Let's just grab that, that'll be easier. So I think there looks pretty nice. So now that will look like we've got some light coming out of the window. It's hitting the ground. That makes it a little bit more believable. One thing I will point out whilst we're looking at it is we've got some words there. And that's telling us there's a preview shadow. This is another part of Unreal Engine really, really wanting us to build our, 
are lighting. And when it says build lighting, it really means build shadows. And we are coming up to the point where we need to think about doing that. So in the next step, we're going to build our lighting for the first time which might give some undesired results. We might have to then start tweaking, but we now really need to know what's happening with these. So in the next step, now that we've got pretty much all our lights that we need in place for now, um, we are going to build lighting. So I'll see you in the next step for some lighting building. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.